क्या पढ़ना है आज हम लोग को पढ़ना है केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ नॉन मेटल प्रीवियस क्लास में हम लोगों ने डिस्कस किया था कि केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मेटल क्या क्या होते हैं उसमें हम लोगों ने देखा कि व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन मेटल रिएक्ट्स विथ ऑक्सीजन व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन मेटल रिएक्ट्स विथ वाटर व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन मेटल रिएक्ट्स विथ ए डाइल्यूट एसिड व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन मेटल रिएक्ट्स विथ सॉल्ट सॉल्यूशन मींस वी जस्ट सॉ द केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मेटल ओके सो टुडे इन दिस पार्ट we have to read about the chemical properties of non metal today we will read what today we will read the chemical properties of non metal so if we talk about the chemical properties of non metal already we know that ki why we are studying the chemical properties of non metal actually we are studying the chemical properties of metal and non metal because we all know that ki the physical properties of metal and non metal is not sufficient to categorize among we categorize them okay that's why we are reading chemical properties of metal and non metal it means the physical properties of non metal was insufficient to know about them to uh, classify uh, between uh, classify them okay that's why we are going to read chemical properties we are just reading chemical properties of what metal and non metal already we have just finished the chemical properties of metal now we have to read chemical properties of what now we have to read chemical properties of non metal if we talk about the chemical properties of non metal so firstly we will start from the chemical reaction of metal with oxygen what happens when oxygen combines with metal or what happens when non metal metal non metal what happens when non metal combines with oxygen when non metal reacts with oxygen or when non metal combines with oxygen it will form acidic oxide it will form what it will form acidic oxide or neutral oxide that means the oxides of non metal may be acidic or may be neutral that may be acidic or neutral it is it depends on the nature of uh, reaction okay uh, how the uh, reaction is going to occur if we talk about the some of the examples of the acidic oxide formed by the reaction of non metal and oxygen and if we talk about the example of uh, neutral oxide which is formed as a result of chemical reaction between non metal and oxygen so we will see that metal non metals like carbon sulfur nitrogen means when these uh, elements these non metals reacts with oxygen when carbon reacts with oxygen it will form what carbon dioxide it will form what carbon dioxide all of you know the name of uh, co2 what is the full form of co2 so full form of co2 is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide okay this carbon dioxide is acidic in nature how can you say that this carbon dioxide is acidic in nature so if this carbon dioxide will put it in contact with water it means when you add this carbon dioxide in water this will form what h2co3 that means carbonic acid what carbonic acid h2co3 it will form what h2co3 and this h2co3 is an acid you better know and if it uh, it is combined with water it uh, forms acid it means it is behaving like an acid hence we can say that carbon dioxide means the oxide of non metal is acidic in nature hence we can say that oxide of carbon is what oxide of carbon is acidic in nature okay now if you will check the carbon dioxide on litmus paper that it is acidic or it is basic you may check it on litmus paper first of all if you will um, what add this carbon dioxide with water means you will have to check the aqueous solution of carbon dioxide what aqueous solution of carbon dioxide aqueous solution of carbon dioxide will turns the blue litmus paper to red because it is acidic in nature and we all know that acid and bases possess its characteristics in the presence of water if it will uh, not have the presence of water with 
uh, it then it will not possess the property of uh, its own it means if it is acid it will not possess the property of acid if uh, uh, there is no presence of water there and if it is base it will not possess the property of base if there is no water uh, with it okay so another example is what sulfur plus oxygen means when when sulfur combines with oxygen it forms what sulfur dioxide what happens when sulfur combines with oxygen so when sulfur combines with oxygen it will form what sulfur dioxide it will form what sulfur dioxide that sulfur oxide dioxide is also acidic in nature acidic in nature how can you say that this sulfur dioxide is acidic in nature if you will add this sulfur dioxide with water it will form h2so4 it will form what h2so4 and you better know that h2so4 is an acid you better know h2so4 is an acid so you can say that in this way you can say that so2 is acidic in nature as if you take the aqueous solution of so2 it means sulfur dioxide this aqueous solution of so2 turns blue litmus to red which shows that he, there is the presence of uh, acidic substance in that solution it means that solution is acidic in nature because we are just uh, uh, watching that the litmus paper turns from blue to red due to this solution and if any solution turns litmus paper blue to red then that solution must be acid that's why uh, it is capable of changing the color of that litmus paper from blue to red okay now if we talk about the neutral oxide of non metals so non metal uh, non metals like nitrogen we all know that key, they are uh, five oxides of nitrogen means nitrogen combines with oxygen in a different different proportion and it means that nitrogen combines with oxygen to form nitrogen oxide means dioxide it nitrogen combines with oxygen to form nitrogen monoxide nitrogen combines with oxygen to form nitrous oxide means nitrogen pentaoxide it means the, this nitrogen combines with oxygen in different ratio or different proportion to form uh, several different different types of compound it means n2o no2 no n2o5 n2o3 these are the five oxides of nitrogen which is formed by the combination between nitrogen and oxygen so you can say that the nitrogen combines in different ratio with oxygen to form different different compound okay so here uh, nitrogen in car is combining with oxygen to form what n2o n2o is a neutral oxide n2o is a neutral oxide as its aqueous solution do not change the color of litmus paper which shows that this compound is neutral in nature that solution is neutral in nature okay if we talk about the carbon carbon you uh, have just seen in the uh, above example carbon combines with oxygen here here we are supplying oxygen in sufficient amount not insufficient insufficient not in sufficient means in is separate from sufficient if you will uh, combine in and sufficient then will then its meaning will be negative but i am saying that in sufficient amount means in large amount if you are providing oxygen in large amount with uh, to carbon then carbon will form carbon dioxide but if you will provide oxygen in in sufficient amount okay in in sufficient amount if you will provide car, uh, oxygen to the carbon dioxide means the uh, amount of oxygen is low then it will uh, form what carbon monoxide then it will form what then it will form carbon monoxide and that carbon monoxide is neutral in nature as its so aqueous solution do not changes the color of litmus paper that's why we can say that this is a, a neutral oxide of non metal okay so do you have any problem in this topic uh, now we will read the next uh, um, what uh, chemical properties of non metal and that uh, chemical property of non metal is uh, when what happens when non metal <laughs> And it will get reduced 
But we all know that non metal can't lose electron. Non metal can't lose electron. And if it can't lose electron, it is just saying that no, I can't give you electron, but come in my, in my contact. It will come. No. It will say no. I don't have uh, any problem here. So I will. Uh, why I uh, will come with you? Huh? It will say no. So we just have to keep in our mind is that ki water and hydrochloric acid contains hydrogen. Water and hydrochloric acid contains hydrogen, and that hydrogen can't get reduced if so non metal can't give electron to the hydrogen present in water and acid it means non metal can't reduce the hydrogen present in acid and water that's why non metals do not react with water and acid okay now we have to reduce what next property and the next property of non metal is what non metals reacts with salt solution means what happens when non metal reacts with salt solution now before reading this uh, characteristics of non metal we would have to know the reactivity series of what we would have to know the reactivity series of non metal do you know the reactivity series of non metal here, if you talk about the reactivity series of non-metal fluorine, chlorine, bromine, fluorine, chlorine, oxygen, bromine, iodine, and then after sulfur. This is the reactivity series of non-metal. Means in descending order, you can write the most reactive non-metal is what? Fluorine. Most reactive metal is fluorine. F. Then after bromine then after oxygen then after brom uh, bromine iodine and then after sulfur fluorine is the most reactive non metals among all and then after chlorine then after oxygen then after bromine then after iodine and at last sulfur it means if we talk about the reactivity series of or the reactiveness activity activeness of non metals then fluorine chlorine oxygen bromine iodine and sulfur this is the activity series of non metals okay so um, we are just talking about the reaction of non metals with salt solution we were just talking about what reaction of non metals with salt solution why i have just told you that before reading this characteristics you will have to learn the reactivity series of non metal because we all know that there must be the presence of some some non metals in salt solution and to displace uh, what that non metal from salt solution there must be the presence of highly reactive non metal so it means uh, if uh, we will uh, discuss in detail the uh, non metal must be highly reactive than the non metal which are present in the salt solution the non metal which are going which is going to react with salt solution must be highly reactive than the non metal present in that salt solution okay that's why I have just said you that you will have to learn the reactivity series of non-metal first of all then after you will learn uh, this uh, uh, characteristics then after you will understand this uh, characteristics of non-metal in a proper way so you have just seen that ki chlorine is highly reactive than bromine chlorine is highly reactive than bromine here we have just uh, uh, reacting sodium bromide nabr is the uh, short form of or the formula of what sodium bromide means sodium bromide is just reacting with chlorine gas chlorine is a non metal you better know and sodium bromide is a salt you all know bromide iodide chloride these are the halogen group elements you all know 
Harrison means salt synthesis, means the element which plays role in the synthesis of salt. If metals combines with bromine, it will form salt. If metal combines with iodine, it will form salt. If metal combines with chlorine, it will form salt. Means metal chloride, metal bromide and metal iodide are uh, actually salt. So here metal bromide, metal bromide is a salt solution that is the solution of uh, metal bromide and water that means this is an aqueous solution. When metal bromide reacts with chlorine it will form what? Sodium chloride that means metal chloride it will form what? Sodium chloride that is metal chloride common salt and releases bromine, bromine okay bromine, bromine gases get released from uh, sodium bromide. What is the reason behind this reaction? Why this reaction takes place? So actually the main reason behind the occurrence of this reaction is that chlorine is highly reactive than this non-metal. That's why this chlorine displaces the non-metal present in the salt solution and forms the corresponding salt and hence NaCl forms. Okay. So another property of means it means that chemical properties of non-metal we are reading the reaction of non-metals with salt solution. If non-metal reacts with salt solution, then that non-metal must be highly reactive than the non-metal which are present in salt solution. Then after the reaction can take place, otherwise the reaction can't take place. Okay. Now another chemical properties of non-metal is what non-metal reacts non-metals reacts with what chlorine to form covalent chloride which are non-electrolytes. Non-metals combines with what chlorine. Non-metals combines with chlorine to form what to form covalent chloride. Covalent chloride means you know covalent chloride, covalent bond. First of all, um, before understanding covalent chloride, you would have to know covalent meaning of covalent. Covalent. Covalent means mutual support. Covalent means what? Mutual support means you are also supporting him. He is also supporting you. That is called mutual support means you are also benefited by him he is also benefited by you means both of you giving one electron to each other yeah both of you giving two electron to each other both of you giving um means giving what if you are giving he is also giving means it is sharing here means covalent bond is formed as a result of sharing of electrons among the atoms covalent bond how covalent bond is formed Covalent bond is formed as a result of sharing of electrons among the atoms. When electrons share their electrons, then a uh, uh, covalent bond forms. Here I said that the non-metals react with chlorine to form covalent compounds. Covalent compound means what? The compound which is formed as a result of covalent bond means the compound which is formed as a result of sharing of electron. Neither of any atom is a complete losing a, a electron or complete gaining electron. That's why they are forming covalent compound. Here we have taken the example of hydrogen. We have taken the example of phosphorus. Hydrogen is combining with chlorine. Hydrogen is combining with chlorine. When hydrogen combines with chlorine, it will form hydrogen chloride. That means HCl and HCl is a covalent compound. HCl is a covalent compound means hydrogen and chlorine both of them are sharing electron with each other. Uh, neither of uh, um, any that means uh, neither hydrogen nor chlorine is uh, complete losing or complete gaining electron they are just sharing the electrons to form compound and the compound which is formed as a result of sharing of electron is called what covalent compounds and we, here we are just uh, watching that here we are just looking that uh, there is the presence of chlorine 
with uh, the nonmetal. There is the presence of chlorine with the nonmetal. So you will say that chloride. So in other words, we can say that ki this compound is equivalent compound, and there is the presence of chloride, chlorine. Okay, that's why we can say that ki this is a covalent chloride. This is a covalent chloride. Hence, hydrogen combines with chlorine to form hydrogen chloride. That means covalent chlorides. In the same way, phosphorus combines with chloride to form phosphorus chloride. Okay. Phosphorus combines with chlorine to form phosphorus chloride and the uh, uh, chloride of phosphorus is also a covalent compound or covalent chloride as it is sharing the electron. Next chemical properties of nonmetal is that nonmetals react with hydrogen to form covalent hydrides. Nonmetal reacts with what? Nonmetals reacts with hydrogen. Nonmetals reacts with hydrogen to form what? Covalent hydride. What? So they form covalent hydride when reacts with hydrogen. Okay. So we will take the example of hydrogen and sulfur. When hydrogen combines with sulfur, sulfur is a nonmetal. You better know. Sulfur is a nonmetal. You better know. Sulfur is just combining with hydrogen. When hydrogen combines with sulfur or sulfur combines with hydrogen, it will form hydrogen sulfide. What it will what will it form? It will form hydrogen sulfide, and that hydrogen sulfide is covalent in nature. Covalent in nature means what? They are just sharing electron to form that compound. So we can say that that is covalent hydride as there is the presence of what hydrogen and presence of hydrogen with uh, any nonmetal with metal means if we you will say uh, sodium NaH that is sodium hydride CaH2 that is calcium hydride MZH2 that is magnesium hydride in the same way H2 is sulfur hydride uh, what uh, sulfur hydride it means uh, hydrogen sulfide Okay, uh, sulfur hydride or sulf uh, hydrogen sulfide means covalent hydride is formed as a result of reaction uh, between nonmetals and hydrogen. Covalent hydro hydride is formed as a result of reaction between nonmetal and hydrogen. Okay, if you will uh, uh, react hydrogen with sulfur, if you will uh, watch the reaction between sulfur and hydrogen carefully, you will um, uh, get a pungent smell of uh, like a rotten egg. You will get a pungent smell like a rotten egg, and that uh, smell is due to the formation of hydrogen sulfide, which is formed as a result of reaction between hydrogen and sulfur. Have you um, ever smelled the rotten egg? Ah, uh, it's uh, very um, pungent. Okay, uh, in the same way it will uh, smell. Means there is no difference between the smell of a uh, rotten egg and hydrogen sulfide. Okay, another reaction uh, if we are taking is uh, what? Uh, nitrogen reacts with hydrogen, it will form what? Nitrogen hydride. What? Nitrogen hydride. It means it will form ammonia. Ammonia, you better know ammonia, NS3. After then, it may react with water, uh, oxygen to form hydrogen oxide. It may react with chlorine to form hydrogen chloride. These are the covalent hydrides of nonmetal. HCl, H2O, NH3, H2S. These are the covalent hydrides of nonmetal. Okay? So, now, do you have any problem till here? If you don't have any problem till here, then I will proceed to the another topic. So the next topic which we have to read is the chemical the uses of metals and nonmetals. Means in this topic we will read the uses of metals and nonmetals. What are the uses of metals and nonmetals? How metals and nonmetals are? Use and for what purpose they are used. So, uh, first of all, we will talk about the uses of metals. Metals like 
कॉपर एंड अल्मोनियम मेटल्स लाइक कॉपर एंड अल्मोनियम आर यूज्ड इन मेकिंग वायर्स व्हाट वायर्स व्हिच टाइप ऑफ वायर्स तो इलेक्ट्रिक वायर्स एज वी नो दैट मेटल्स आर गुड कंडक्टर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दैट्स व्हाई दे आर यूज्ड एज वायर्स कॉपर एंड अल्मोनियम आर यूज्ड एज वायर्स एज दे आर good conductor of electricity another is iron copper aluminum these are used to make household utensils uh, usually you see in your house uh, and your household utensils are made of aluminum are made of iron or stainless steel also or, or copper that may be of iron aluminum copper or any stainless steel okay after then factories equipments like uh, um, several types of uh, factories equipments like machines generator uh, what uh, knife uh, uh, so many things are there which are used in uh, industries as equipments and they are uh, uh, made uh, from what iron uh, copper uh, aluminum these things okay iron is a metal which is used as catalyst in the preparation of ammonia gas what in the preparation of ammonia iron is used as catalyst by haber's process dekho haber's process you should know ki haber process is a process of conversion of nitrogen atmospheric nitrogen into uh, what ammonia hence nitrogenous compound by utilizing hydrogen especially uh, uh, from uh, uh, especially gain from what methane means uh, combining atmospheric nitrogen with hydrogen to form uh, ammonia okay It is called haber process okay and uh, that is uh, and in that process iron is used as catalyst okay so another property of metal is what zinc zinc is a, a property not used sorry another use of metal is what zinc is used for galvanization of iron galvanization you should know galvanization is the process of providing layer of zinc over the iron okay that is called galvanization why we galvanize the iron to so be galvanize the iron to protect iron from rusting okay or corrosion as we all know that the iron is rust reactive it can't uh, it to protect iron from getting oxidized okay chromium and nickel is used for electroplating and in the manufacture of stainless steel chromium and nickel uh, you don't have heard the name of chromium and nickel chromium and nickel and nickel these are the metals which are used for electroplating electroplating means uh, covering of any metal by using any metals with the help of electricity means providing the layer of metal on the surface of any other uh, highly reactive metal by the help of electric uh, uh, current okay means by the process of uh, I, you can say that electrolysis so electroplating uh, for purpose uh, chromium and nickel is used for electroplating uh, purpose and is also used in the manufacture of stainless steel stainless steel after then aluminum foils uh, you have heard aluminum foils are used for packaging what cigarettes packaging of food items and for packaging several things like medicines we have agar also silver and gold you uh, better have seen that the silver iron and gold are used in the jewelry purpose you always wear jewelry uh, when you are going to attend uh, now uh, any uh, any any type of uh, party or any type of ceremony uh, for what purpose to decorate yourself uh, it means uh, uh, silver and gold are shiny that's why you are just trying to decorate yourself uh, means sign yourself by the uh, help of that shiny metals means you just think that these shiny metals will uh, increase your shining okay that's why you are using that uh, that metal as a jewelry okay another use of metal is uh, have you heard the name mercury mercury is used in the thermometer uh, you better know 
mercury is a liquid metal you also know at room temperature the mercury is uh, found in liquid state and this liquid mercury is used in uh, thermometer zirconium is a zr is the symbol of zirconium zirconium is a metal which is used to make bullet proof materials bullet proof jackets bullet proof alloys bullet proof alloys are made by the use of zirconium metal zirconium z i r c o n i u m okay another metal is what lead lead is used in car batteries in making car batteries lead is used also sodium titanium zirconium as you heard the name titanium titanium t i t e n i u m titanium uh, sodium uh, zirconium these are used um, for what purpose these are used in a space science projects a space science projects uh, okay in that uh, um, uh, what uh, work in that uh, um, method and that uh, uh, process uh, this these metals are used means in a space science project sodium titanium and zirconium are used uh, do you have any problem in this topic no okay then uh, we will proceed towards the uses of non metals if we talk about the uses of non metals non metals are you don't have to get hesitate ki sir is speaking in uh, english uh, only is not not just explaining um each and everything in a hindi word actually i'm just thinking that ki uh, i uses the english uh, sentence just like uh, in the you can understand uh, my english sentence in a very easy way because i just spoke very simple english okay so if we are talking about uh, what uses of non metal uses of non metal so non metal like hydrogen is used in hydrogenation of vegetable oils hydrogenation means you know adding of hydrogen uh, means uh, when we you are going to make vegetable ghee it means dalda have you heard yes dalda dalda that means vegetable ghee is formed by the uh, hydrogenation of vegetable oil vegetable oil likes uh, mustard oil coconut oil means vegetable oil mustard oil is a uh, uh, linseed oil so um, um, these uh, vegetable oils are just hydrogenated means added with a hydrogen to form vegetable ghee just uh, called dalda okay another an, another non metal if you talk is hydrogen which is used in the manufacture of ammonia you better know in uh, just uh, previous uh, uh, property or in previous uh, topic we have just read ki hydrogen is used in the preparation but of what ammonia when nitrogen combines with hydrogen uh, you just uh, seen the uh, chemical properties of non metal yeah, when you were reading you just saw that the nitrogen when any non metal combines with hydrogen it will form hydrides and covalent hydrides and there i have given the example of nitrogen uh the reaction of nitrogen with hydrogen and forms what uh, ammonia that is ns3 that ns3 is formed as a result of the synthesis between the nitrogen and hydrogen so we can say that nitrogen and hydrogen are the non metals which are used in the manufacture of what ammonia now uh, you know hy uh, liquid hydrogen liquid hydrogen is used as a rocket fuel liquid liquid hydrogen is used as a rocket fuel means it is used uh, as a fuel of rocket as we use petrol in bike as we use uh, what uh, lpg in most of the uh, automobiles means uh, several types of uh, fuels are there for the running of machines of uh, vehicles like car bike um, plane rocket these things so in rocket the fuel which are used in rockets are liquid hydrogen it means liquid hydrogen is used as rocket fuel another non metal is carbon which which when in the form of graphite is used as electrode means you uh, have you heard the name graphite graphite is an allotrope of carbon you better know carbon the allotrope of carbon there are three allotropes of carbon graphite diamond and buckminster fluorine so graphite is a 
non metal that means it is an allotrope of carbon uh, and is used for the uh, making of electrodes after then already i have said ki nitrogen is used in the manufacture of ammonia and also nitrogen is used to preserve food as it is very inert gas nitrogen is a very inert gas it do not reacts with air it do not uh, combines with air easily or oxygen easily that's why it is used as preservatives in several types of foods like uh, uh, you always eat kurkure chips lays wagera wagera this uh, this uh, food items uh, contains nitrogen gas in their bags and that's why on um, they are very fluffy okay means uh, nitrogen is used as preservatives in where most of the food items after then uh, if we talk about the uses of uh, uh, nitrogen in another way so most of um, most of the uh, compounds of nitrogen like uh, uh, dry nitrotoluen or nitroglycerin these are the compounds of nitrogen which are used as what explosives these are used as explosives okay another metal like sulfur is used in the manufacturing of what sulfuric acid sulfur is used in manufacturing of sulfuric acid okay as to as so for after then sulfur is also used in the manuf in the uh, what uh, formation of uh, or in the making of gunpowder and it is also used as fungicides fungicides means what the uh, chemical which is used to kill the fungi or um, fungi or uh, another type of uh, what uh, microorganisms in the uh, what uh, soil or uh, in the cropped field or in water fungicides it is used in as fungicides to remove the amount of or the number of fungi from any uh, place okay and also use, it is used in making gunpowder sulfur is also used in the vulcanization of rubber actually vulcanization is not a tough word this is a process of hardening water hardening rubber means the process of hardening rubber is called vulcanization okay so uh, till here we have completed uh, the uh, uses of non metals now in next class we will read the next topic okay uh, do you have any problem till here if you don't have any problem then uh, after finishing this topic you will write the rise question from this dot topic and uh, okay and uh, i think uh, it will be so easy for you to make the easy uh, rise question from uh, this uh, uh, topic and also you will do the question answer of the book which you have been prescribed before the closing of schools it means you have you will have to complete your question bank okay